Hello, my name is Clive Scott and this is part 24 of a course on Java and um, it deals with uh, generics and specifically it's about um, uh, generic types and wildcard types. Uh, this is what I'm going to cover. Um, it's uh, quite a lot, probably about um, two and a half hours I would guess, uh, something like that. Um, and uh, it's in fact only about half of uh, generics. Um, Oh, by the way, this list continues on the next page, so that's not all. <laughs> um, now, some things down here um, I've never seen covered um, anywhere. Um, multiple type bounds with uh, wildcards, for example. Um, I've never seen that covered anywhere. Um, not surprisingly, um, the reference compiler, the uh, Sun Java reference compiler, uh, gets it wrong. Um, Eclipse though, the Eclipse compiler, um, that gets it correct. So um, it's hardly surprising that people don't really understand this area, so I'm going to try and cover it anyway as best I can. Um, so let's have a look at the next next page, see what else we're going to um, cover. Uh, well, this is the uh, rest of what I'm going to cover, and um, it's probably easiest to tell you what I'm not going to cover. Um, so this will be in the next lecture. Um, and uh, the main area is generic methods and um, uh, things like um, erasure and uh, reifiable types and uh, generics and arrays because that's related. Um, uh, a type inference of course because that's all tied up with generic methods and uh, so bridges and capture conversion and uh, interfacing to uh, legacy code um, and um, heat pollution that uh, can result from that sort of thing, interfacing the legacy code and uh, um, enums. Um, although enums are um, self-referential types, and I, and I will briefly mention them here, but I'll go into a lot more detail then in the next lecture. Now, um, uh, generally speaking, I've often wondered why it is um, uh, why generics is so much more difficult than the rest of Java, and um, I've come to the conclusion that the reason for that is that um, it's difficult because it doesn't actually do anything at runtime. And that's basically what makes it difficult because if it um, if something was taking place at runtime, you could you could reason about what was going on and you could reason well this doesn't work because this does this and that does that and so on and that's that's why it doesn't work and you could reason about it. But because nothing takes place at runtime, it's all um, it's all done by the compiler. You haven't got that sort of handle that enables you to reason about it. So what I'm going to try and do is um, is to, to give you uh, some sort of handle that you can get hold of to, to sort of uh, work out why things don't don't work the way you expect and it's not as easy to do this with generics as I say because it uh, is all done by the compiler and it doesn't take basic runtime. Uh, well to understand one of the main reasons why um, uh, generics came about um, it helps to have a look at the old star collections and uh, all these um, interfaces in classes uh, can be found in Java Util in the Java Util package you'll see all this stuff and uh, what we've got here is a UML diagram of them and um, there's actually some more than this but uh, these are just the main ones and um, uh, what we've got is uh, you can see here that these dotted lines represent um, implementation so these classes down here implement that interface and that interface extends that interface. Uh, right, well, um, let's take a look at them. Now, um, a list is um, just a list of objects, and uh, uh, the list interface allows you to store stuff in there and remove stuff and that sort of thing. And uh, a map is um, a mapping between um, uh, keys and values. Um, so you can uh, store. Key, uh, various keys with their associated values and that's what a, a map is. Um, a set is um, a bit like um, a list except that um, you can't have duplicates in a set so it's like a mathematical set basically you can only have an element either in the set or it isn't and um, what happens is you uh, you write a, um, you uh, uh, produce something which is of type list and uh, you can choose which of these uh, classes you want to implement it in that list and um, uh, there's trade-offs between various types down here so now 
array list and vector are, are roughly the same. They're all, in the case of um, array list and vector, they're, they're stored in arrays. So uh, you've got an array that holds all these things. And uh, linked list is just a linked list. Now, that means that um, uh, in the linked list case, you can go from one item to the next item to the next one very easily, very quickly. Uh, you can do the same with vector and array list, except um, you can also get to the nth item very quickly in vector and array list because they're stored in an array, basically. Now, the difference between array list and vector is uh, to do with synchronization, basically. That's the main difference. Now, array list is not synchronized. And uh, when we get around to discussing threads and stuff, you'll see what that implies. It means, in fact, that when you've got several processes all trying to access the array list, you're going to have problems unless you put in some external synchronization mechanism to prevent them both trying to access and modify the same element. With uh, vector, that um, is, is built into it. It's got synchronization built in, so you don't have to worry so much about that. Now the same sort of thing is occurs with hash map and hash table. Um, hash table has got the um, synchronization stuff built in, and hash map hasn't. So if you've got multiple threads, um, uh, different processes and stuff, all trying to access a, um, a a map of some sort, then um, the thing to use is either hash table or use hash map and put some external synchronization with it. Now you notice that that's uh, lowercase t there, and the reason for that is um, a historical one. It's one of the first collections that was ever written, and uh, it had a lowercase t at the time, and that's remained ever since. So just be careful about that. And what else? Um, well, right at the top of the tree over here, we've got a collection, which has got some just very basic types of operations uh, that all these subtypes down here do. Uh, lists, of course, as I've said, is just a an ordered sequence of objects and map is, like I said, a mapping from keys to values. You can store a new uh, key and its associated value in there and remove them, that sort of thing. And look them up, look up a particular um, value based on its key and so on. It's straightforward. Uh, array list uh, just maintains a uh, list using a resizable array and um, hash map is uh, there's a map using hashing. Now, if you want to know what hashing is, just look it up. Any any book on computer science will tell you about that. Now, um, what else? Uh, yeah, there's some other minor differences between these two. Um, like um, with uh, vector, you can do things like when the list sort of when the array fills up, it will automatically resize, and you can you can deal with how it does the resizing and things like that. Things like those sort of parameters are, are modifiable in, in vector, and there's a slight difference in array list. Uh, but if you want to see any of this stuff, just just go and look at the code uh, or the documentation for it. There's plenty of stuff. It's really straightforward, not hard to understand. Right, let's go and see how they're actually used. <coughs> 